seventh chapter of the book of Matthew. After seeking God, then what? The Bible says, as long as I sought the Lord, He made me to prosper, and He'll make you to prosper also. Seek the Lord as healer, and He'll become your healer. Seek Jesus as a blesser and a businessman, He'll become a businessman to you. He'll bless your business. Seek God as a children lover, and He'll love your children while they're in sin and save them. But you have to believe that. I had to stand the gap for my daughter for three years while she was on dope and watch five of her little friends die and have five funerals. Me and Zona was in the supermarket the other day in Cleveland, Tennessee. She'd come down to visit me. We were walking around the supermarket. And this Pentecostal pastor in Cleveland, Tennessee that has a beautiful church Pretty big church. He comes up to me and pecks me on the shoulder. I was over next to the produce counter. He said, Mr. Hayes, I just want to tell you that I, I love your ministry and I appreciate you and I love your Bible school and I appreciate your Bible school. And I just want to tell you you have some of the sweetest students I've ever seen in my life. And I just believe in what you're doing. I just want to tell you that. I looked around at him and his face was so sad. He really looks had a sad, long, long look on his face. His wife was standing there. She even looked sadder. You might even know him if I told him told if, if I told you his name, I'm sure some of you would know him. Years ago, he was an international youth leader for a Pentecostal denomination. But he was an international youth leader all over the world. His wife even looked sadder than he did. Too lonely. Look like two lonely, wretched people. Zona came up to me. She was over the next uh, counter. She says, Daddy, who was, who was that talking to you? Who was those people talking to you? I said, Zona, look at them. She looked at me. Don't you recognize them? I said, I know they look old and lonely. I said, don't you recognize them? She said, no, I don't recognize them. And I said, they're the parents. Of your friend. The last friend the sixth friend that you had to die with an overdose of drugs. Remember him when he was in the 20s? The last boy that died? After your angel appeared to you and you came back to God? Right after that, you remember that last boy that died? I said, that's his parents. I said, Zona, look at Take a long, hard look at them. I could be walking in their shoes if I hadn't prayed hours and hours for you. I could be walking down the supermarket pushing a cart, lonely and brokenhearted, losing my only daughter to drugs. It's only the only reason I'm not like that. It's the coming of Jesus. And the working of angels that comes down from heaven to earth and has a ministry. Angels have a ministry on earth. And I saw that my daughter was going to die. Her friends were dying. 
after you have five funerals, you will become a believer that the devil kills young people. <laughs> Especially young people on dope. Are young people drinking? He just will, that's all. And I knew that she was running with him all the time. And I couldn't get her to stop. And I couldn't get her to change. Lester Summerall couldn't get her to change. Kenneth Hagin come to my house. He couldn't get her to change. I couldn't get her to change. The church couldn't get her to change. Her friends couldn't get her to change. Nobody on earth could reach her that I knew anything about. I tried every angle in the book to keep her out of hell. Nobody could reach her. I had nothing left except prayer and seeking God. I knew that God would have to rescue my wayward daughter on dope or she's going to hell, right with her other friends. But I kept praying. And one night, that night came. Always remember this as long as you live. If you'll keep on praying and you'll keep on seeking God, there will come a day that you'll reach the top of the mountain and the light of God will shine so bright. Just like it shined on my finances when my businesses were broke for five years and I had to pray and walk the floor of my office in the nighttime and lie at an empty checkbook for five years. Honey, today, it's not empty. The accounts have thousands and thousands of dollars in them. And many of them have CDs on the side. I don't have to beg for money to run my Bible school. It just happens. Sweet people like you and like Dodie just loves me and just, God just does it for me, that's all. Blessed be the name of Jesus forever. But I'm telling you that that day will come for you. If you're struggling now, and of course I guess you've already noticed in the last 10 minutes since I've been teaching you that some of you are struggling. You can have certain things planned in your life, especially when you present the gospel, but you don't know the congregation like Jesus does. Then you start talking down a certain line, the Spirit of God will rise up on the inside of you and he'll let you know the struggles of people. Last week, Oral Roberts came up to me last week four times and put his arms around me. And one time, he cried all the time I was speaking, ministering, he was sitting on the front and he wept. He came up, I was taking up an offering. And he came up. And one time when he put his arms around me, he just broke. And he wept and held on and cried and he cried and he cried and he wept and he wept and he wept. Brother, if there's ever been a man on earth that knows what struggling is, Oral Roberts knows. Does he ever know? Then you better believe he knows. He knows the attacks from hell. He knows what they are. He's been through them. Still going through them. But it all is just about hit pay dirt right now. And I can tell you how he's done it. I don't even know if he knows it yet or not. He may not even know it. But I believe it was, well, one day last week, I don't know what, I don't know what day it was now, Sunday or something. Or Roberts' daughter invited us over to her house. She lives next door to Oral. And she says, we want you all to come over and pick something to eat, and we'll go swimming in Oral's pool together. 
So we went over and had dinner with her. And her, Oral's daughter and her husband runs the ministry. His name is Ron. I told him, I said, Ron, all Oral is going through with now, I've already been through it several times in my life. Don't think he's going through with right now. It's an attack from hell. I said, the devil hates Oral Roberts University. And he ruthlessly hates the city of faith. The devil hates any hospital that has Christian doctors and nurses in it. He hates it. And I said, he's just trying to show his ugly head. I said, Ron, he's Oral's daughter's husband. I said, tell me that decision I heard about Oral making. Tell me in first hand. I want to hear it first hand. Tell me first hand what that decision he made. That love decision. Glory to God. If you let the Holy Ghost teach you how to love, brother, you'll come out on top every time. Tell me that decision firsthand that Oral made just a few days ago. He said, Oral made the decision a few days ago that because he had so many empty beds in the hospital, they were losing so much money. Thousands and thousands of dollars a day. He made a decision that anybody that had to come to the hospital and didn't have any money that could not go in the state or nobody would help them to come to the city of faith and he'd take them free. I said, well, Ron, just mark this down. I said, his days of want is about over. You might as well look for that. His days of want is about over. And boy, has that man been through hell and struggle. But his days of want's about over. I said, be God forevermore. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I might get to this after a while. I don't know, but... I guess as you can tell, I can't hardly even teach or talk either one. The Holy Ghost on the inside of me is taking fits. Glory to God forevermore. I may have to come back and teach it to you later on. <laughs> Blessed be the name of Jesus forever. But you better know this. It may be Norval Hayes that's going through struggles. And it looks like there is no hope. None. Human beings can't help you. You can't find anything that can help you. But you keep on praying and you keep on seeking God. God finds favor in your seeking him. He finds favor after a while in your hours and years of praying for your child to stay out of hell. And he sent an angel. He put meat on an angel about as big as two men. Sent the angel to my house. Walked in my dope attic daughter's room. Didn't say a word. Just sat down beside of her bed and looked at her with the glory of the Lord all over it. And it so scared her. It scared all the dope devils in her out. God has the knowledge to help you, my brother and sister. Oh, God. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
first of all, God's got two or three things he wants to do. But first of all, your parents is going through hell. And you've got children that's totally living in darkness. And it seems that there's no way to touch them. There seems there's no way. God makes a way when there is no way. I don't know how to reach them. Don't ask me that. Don't, I could break the power of the devil over them. But I'm telling you, if you seek God and trust him, he'll reach that child of yours. And if you spent days and months and years praying and praying and praying, but there seem like there's no hope and your children are still lost and they're so precious to you. I want you to get up out of your seat and come and stand right here in front of me. Right now. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. <laughs> you don't know how your parents feel about their children until you go to the funerals. Just don't know. You have to be there and see a 19-year-old laying in the casket. And look at the parents' face and the whole family's face, brokenhearted. And sometimes young people get so ruthless that you can't reach them. You can't even find anybody to listen to. And many of you knows exactly what I'm talking about. But I'm telling you that you've got to make yourself Keep on loving them. And sometimes you get so mad at them you want to half kill them. But you can't allow yourself to be that way. You've got to keep on praying and trusting God and seeking God with all of your heart and all your mind and all your soul. And keep on praying and keep on and on and on and on praying. It doesn't make a difference what they're doing. I don't care if they're living with somebody. I don't care if they're an alcoholic. I don't care if they're a homosexual or a dope addict or what they are. It makes no difference what they are. They don't get too tough for God. I'm telling you from experience, if God chooses to, he can send an angel into their room as twice as big as they are That'll, that, that, that'll blow their skull up. They'll get so scared, they'll nearly run through the wall. And brother, when an angel comes in the room, he brings such atmosphere they know nothing about. It's a holy awe in the room. And it brings a fear to them. Blessed be the name of Jesus forevermore. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Everyone of you in the altar right now, repeat after me. Say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father I, come I come down here in Jesus' name as a half broken hearted parent. But I'd like to be full victory. But as long as my offsprings are lost. Living in, a world of darkness. living in a world of darkness. There's a little lonely spot in me. A lonely spot in me. Say, Jesus, Jesus, I'm 
I'm talking about my children. <laughs> Say, Jesus, Jesus, please don't let my children go to hell. I don't know how to reach them, but you do. And right now, in Jesus' name, I break the power of the devil over my children. I command you, Satan, you turn my children loose. Jesus, I'm giving my children to you. I don't want the devil to have my children. I give all of my children to you, Jesus. I cast them over on you. I'll stop trying to do it myself. I already learned. I can't do it. I can't save them. They won't listen. They don't change for me. Jesus, I give them to you. I cast them over on you. I ask that your Holy Spirit will deal with them. I ask your angels to minister to them. I ask the Spirit of God to put them under conviction. I ask you, Father, to send servants across their path that can help them. Any way you choose to do it, they're yours. I throw my hands up. I take my hands off of them. I give them to you completely. I confess with my mouth and I believe it in my heart. Jesus, you will never let my children go to hell because I'm giving them to you tonight in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for saving my children. No child of mine will ever go to hell my children will spend all eternity in heaven. I believe that. And I believe it in Jesus' name. And I want to thank you, Jesus, for saving my children. I'm not so sad anymore. I feel glad now. I feel a burden lifted from me. Jesus, my children is yours. And they are free from the devil's power. And I will walk. And I will pray. And I will sing the victory. In Jesus' name. My children are free from dope and all kind of sin that would wreck them. They are free in Jesus' name. Jesus, I hold up my hands to you right now. And I want to worship you because you're such a great God. Well, go ahead and do it then. Worship Him. Worship Him. Worship Him and praise Him. Worship Him and praise Him. Worship Him. him him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For saving all the children that belong to these parents. Satan, in Jesus' name, I bind you. I command you. Turn all these parents loose. Let them go free. All the children belong to these parents. I command you to turn them loose. Let them go free. Let the parents go free to pray. Thank you, Lord, for saving all the children that belong to these parents. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Blessed be God forevermore. Thank you, Lord. 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 Where's the song leader at? Is he here? Get the microphone and sing that song to these parents and get them to sing it with you that Jesus loves the little children. He said, my child's not little. He's a doctor. To Jesus He's small. He's a child of God. God looks at us as children. Do you understand that? Sing this with him. Sing it several times until you get to believe in it. Sing it. Go ahead. Jesus loves the little children. 
Sing it. That means yours. Black and white, they are precious in His sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Jesus loves the little children. All the children of the world. They have a black and white, they are Yes, they are. Jesus loves the Bow your heads in reverence to God. I want you to say it three times. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, Jesus. thank you for loving my children. Thank you for my say, Jesus, Jesus, thank you for loving my children. Thank you for my Jesus, Jesus, thank you for loving my children. Now hold your head up again and sing it some more. Sing it some more. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in His sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Jesus loves the little Everybody say, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. For, saving my children. for saving my children. I believe. I, believe. I, refuse, to I refuse to doubt. I do believe. I do believe. Now turn and go back to your seat and sing it softly as you go. Sing it softly. Sing it softly as you go. Sing it softly as you go. I'll just stay up there. Steve, would you stay up here just for some stuff just for a minute? Just stay up here with me. I just had to learn a long time ago that you can't just override the Holy Ghost to get to preach. I mean, you can, but if you do it, you just make a mistake. That's all. I was going to get into my lesson tonight, but he just kept on dealing with me for 10 or 15 minutes, and I kept waiting to see if he's going to let up. And he didn't let up. So I'm just going to have to obey him. So this is be the night of the Holy Ghost. That's all. Lord, as God, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
All right? Blessed be the name of Jesus forever. All of you men and women that's struggling in business, you're really having a hard time. You need your business to be blessed, oh God. Get up out of your seat. Come and stand right here in front of me. You're struggling. In business, you're struggling. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That should be the name of Jesus forever. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I do have a tape series that would help you a lot, but I don't have any of them with me. I have them at the office, but it's called Prosperity the Bible Way. It has principles in there that would help you get your business straightened out completely. But you'd have to write the office to get it. Jimmy, could you take orders for that? If they paid you and you could take it and ship it to them prepaid, it could help you a lot. I get testimonies all over the country. People get that tape series and their business was going down, 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 down. And you just have to sit and listen to it. One fellow in California is 23 years old. His manufacturing company, his business was going pot, making no money at all. He bought my tape series entitled Prosperity the Bible Way, and he got God involved in his business. He made Jesus his business partner. But he couldn't make Jesus his business partner to speak of. Listen to the tape series 25 times. He listened to it until it got inside of him, until he got it. And that day came that he got it. Every time he said about to lose it, I'd go back and listen to that thing again. I'd play it over and over again. And now he's 23 years old. He owns a manufacturing company. He owns half of a manufacturing company. About must be a large city block square. What does he own? 14 stores, Jimmy? He owns 12 stores in Los Angeles, plus half of the manufacturing company, and a third of another manufacturing company, and he's 23 years old. He got up and testified in L.A. He says, I never could do it. I never could get it until I bought that tape series. I listened to it 25 times. See, men, God has principles for you to go by. And I'm telling you, they're for you. I wish I had some of the tape series that you get, but I just don't have any with me. Now, you might say to me, how long do you think I'll have to struggle? Well, when you see victory, it might be a while before the manifestation comes. To me, it was five years after the devil attacked me. Of course, I don't know the devil might have attacked your business two years ago. I don't know. But you might not have to wait five years. You may get your manifestation in six months or two months. You usually won't get your manifestation until you pass God's test. Not the heaven manifestation. You might get a natural blessing. But when you get a heavenly blessing up on your business, you can't even stop the profits. It is absolutely amazing what God does for you. I'm riding up the road, and the Spirit of God fell on me a little after daylight one morning and told me to buy a piece of property. And I bought it. I didn't tell you about this one. I bought it for $90,000. Still got it. Today, just that one piece now is worth over a million. The Holy Ghost told me to buy it. I thought it was intercession when he moved up on me. I thought I was going to have to stop the car and get me a motel room and pray it out. <laughs> but it wasn't intercession. He was wanting to tell me something. Well, I never had God to tell me that before like that, you know. 
not just like that. I was going to go fishing that day. But he told me, he says, don't, don't go fishing. I have some property I want you to buy. I said, oh, no, okay, okay, I won't go fishing. No. Uh -uh. God visits me in my car strong enough to talk to me. I'm not talking about something I dreamed up in my head. I'm talking about God talking to me. Brother, if God tells you not to go fishing, you better not go. You might fall out of the boat. <laughs> he has something in store for you. You see, there's one little trigger that God can do, just one little thing God can do and develop your business into a million dollars worth of business. I mean, when he starts blessing something, it's amazing how you get blessed. Oh, God. I can't hardly believe it myself. I stand back and look down. I can't hardly believe it myself. My natural mind, your natural mind is not big enough to accept heavenly blessings. Only God's big enough to understand that. And where Jesus said, if you'll trust me, I will open up the windows of heaven and I will pour you out a blessing you won't have enough room in you to contain it. And that's exactly the way it is. But boy, you sure don't know anything about it when you're struggling, I can tell you that. Right now, tonight, Oral Roberts knows nothing about that. I mean, today, he's struggling like you would not believe right now. But I have a feeling in my spirit that old days of struggling is just about over. Amen. Thank God. I'm looking for the city of faith now since Oral showed that love to people that has no money. I'm looking for the city of faith now to have the blessing of God on it so much. It'll probably be the most popular hospital in America. Amen. I believe that. I believe it. And this is hard to say. This is hard. This may seem hard for you that I should say this to you. But if you're struggling, start helping people and start giving. You said, Brother Norval, I don't have very much profit in my business. I, I'm telling you, it's not making, I don't have very much. Well, then give a little bit of the little bit you do make, share it with the Lord. The little bit of profit you're making now, share it with the Lord and watch God, what God does. Don't just share the profits now with God. Remember, walk the floor and pray and make Jesus your business partner. And you tell Jesus that he's your business partner. You tell him out loud so he can hear it. And you make him your business partner. And you tell Jesus he's the best businessman you ever met. And you tell him that your business will not go broke. That is, if he puts you in it. Because he'll bless it. I'll guarantee you he'll bless it. Blessed be God forever. Now, I want you to stretch your hand up here to me. Congregation, I want you to stretch your hand out to these people. I'm going to break the power of the devil over your business. The devil's crazy. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I bring my precious brothers and sisters before you right now. And I know that you love them and love their soul most of all and love their children. But you also love their business. And you want them to make a profit in their business. Jesus, you're not in the debit business. You're in the profit business. In Jesus' name right now, you foul spirit from hell. You foul poverty spirit that's trying to break these people and wreck their business. I bind you in Jesus' name and I command you, take your hand, Satan, off of these businesses in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I command you, go from them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Lord, for the blessing of God falling upon their business. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The blessing of God and theirs in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now all of you standing in the altar, I want to teach you to talk like I do. I want you to say in Jesus' name. In Jesus name Satan, Satan. You're a failure. You're a failure. 
You're a thief. You're a thief. I'm not listening to you. And that's for sure. Right now, in Jesus' name, in the house of the Lord, I bind you up. I commend you. Take your hand off of my business. My business belongs to God. Jesus is my business partner. Jesus is the best businessman I ever met. Jesus helps me in my business. Jesus blesses my business. I command my business in Jesus' name to be successful in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I command prophets to come in. I command money to come in to pay all of my bills with and lots of money left over to give to God and buy my family what they want in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for doing it. My business, my business is successful. In Jesus' name. I am not a failure. I am successful. God is successful. And God lives in me. I am successful. I'm a partner with Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I am successful. Your blessing is on my business. And on my life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus, I will worship you every day of my life. I won't put my business first. I'll put you first. I lift my hands to God right now. And I worship you, Jesus. Well, do it then. Worship him. I worship you, Jesus. I worship you, Jesus. I worship you, Jesus. 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 I worship you, Jesus. Oh, I worship you, Jesus. I worship you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. I worship you, Jesus. I praise you, Jesus. Let the Holy Ghost lead you. Ten and fifty verses or something. Whatever God gives you. Whatever God gives Steve, just follow him. I command you, Satan, in the name of the Lord, to give up your weapons and flee. For the Lord has given me authority to walk all over thee. I command you. Satan in the name of the Lord to give up your weapons and flee. For the Lord has given me authority to walk all over. I command you, Satan. I command you, Satan, in the name of the Lord to give up your weapons and flee. For the Lord has given me authority to walk all over thee. And I found a new way of living. I found a new life divine. I have the fruit of the Spirit. I'm abiding, abiding in the vine. I am abiding in the vine, abiding in the vine. Love, joy, health, peace, He has made these mine. I have prosperity, power, and victory, abiding, abiding in the vine. Sing it once again. I found a new way of living. Oh, I found a new life divine. I have the fruit of the Spirit. I'm abiding, abiding in the vine. I am abiding in the vine, abiding in the vine. Love, joy, health, peace, He has made these mine. I have prosperity, power, and victory. Abiding, abiding in the vine. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. 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 Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I want you to think you're going to do a lot of things on your own, but I want you to say with Jesus, Jesus. I am successful. I am am not a failure. failure. Jesus is not a failure. failure. I am not a failure. failure. I'm not going to be a failure. I am successful successful. in Jesus' name. name. As he sings that again, just turn around and go right back to your seat. Sing it going back to your seat. Sing it, Steve. I command you, Satan, in the name of the Lord, to give up your weapons and be. For the Lord has given me authority to walk all right, all God, God, thank you, Jesus. I command you, Satan, in the name of the Lord, to give up your weapons and be. For the Lord has given me authority to walk all over the earth. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap. Blessed be God forevermore. Just stay up here, Steve. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be the name of Jesus forever. Well, I mean, if the Holy Ghost wants to do things, you might as well let him do it. I don't know how to do much myself, but he knows exactly what he wants to do. I tell you, God knows his people. He knows what you need. And he, I tell you, he is reaching out to you tonight. I mean, he let me know at the beginning, son, there's some struggling people in here. I want to bless them. He wanted to bless you so much, he wouldn't even let me teach hardly. This would be one night that I didn't teach very long, is it? I have to come back some night and teach about three hours. Yeah. Now then comes to the most precious times in the service. When people are struggling for joy and peace and life itself. Kenneth Copeland asked me one time, he says, Normal how? How come God knows you so heavy? I said, I don't know. He just does sometimes. I said, the Holy Ghost just rise up out of me. I said, I don't tell him to do it. He just does it. He said, I've never seen anybody that the Holy Ghost rise up like he does in you. I says, well, I can't help it. I'm just standing here trying to be nice. If he chooses to do it, he just does it, that's all. Blessed be God forever. I said, when he shows you something, you might as well go with him. Go down the road, he's leading you. Those who are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. No use in the Holy Ghost rising up in you, want to do something, and you would do something else. I mean, I mean, really, people, God don't need our teaching ability. He can use it, but he don't have to have it. I mean, he needs preachers and teachers and all like that, you know. But the Holy Ghost has got more sense in five minutes than we've got in five years. Because without him, we're totally nothing. The greater one lives on the inside of you. He knows you and knows what you need. And uh, I, buddy and Pat Harrison one time came to my Bible school in Cleveland, Tennessee, and we just bind up devils and just throw it open to the Holy Ghost, let him do what he wants to do. And the first time they came there, they tried to minister the first night, and Pat says, Norval, I've never been to a place in my life where the Holy Ghost works like this. I says, well, I've been to a lot of places where he works. I said, I, we just, I said, he wants to be free in all sanctuaries and all public meetings to work and do what he wants to do. I don't claim to have much sense. I says, but the Spirit of God knows exactly what the people need, and he loves them. And he wants to work with them, and he wants to bless them. God don't want you running around struggling in nothing. He don't want you running around sick. He wants to heal you. He don't want you running around broke. He wants to bless you. He don't want your children to go to hell. He wants to save them. Tonight, you probably saw one of the best salvation 
invitations you've seen in a long time. You mean you think God will save all those children? Are you kidding? Yes, I believe God will go visit them. Right in the bar if he has to. You better believe it. Don't tell me God won't do it. My daughter floated in about 4 o'clock one morning. Just floated in about 4 o'clock. You know, when you get on dope, you don't even come home until 4 or 5 o'clock, if you come at all. It's all right. Let her float. She floated in for her last float. <laughs> God sent a big angel in her room, and her floating days were over. Lord, it be to God, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> she lives about an hour and 20 minute drive from me, I guess. And she, says, she told me today, she said, Daddy, I'm going to be at your house tomorrow. She says, I'm going to bring you all kinds of things. And she says, we're going to have you chicken and dumplings, and we're going to have you fresh green beans, and we're going to have you all kinds of stuff. We're going to have you okra, all kinds of, we're going to have dinner cooked for you when you get home. I said, is that right? She says, oh, yeah, Daddy. She said, Daddy, I love you so much. I said, go ahead. <laughs> Feel free. <laughs> Sometimes she puts her arms around me and says, Daddy, had not been for your faith, you know, I'd have went to hell, Daddy, had not been for your faith. She starts kissing me all over my face and just holds on to me like she's 12 years old or maybe six and I just let her. Because <laughs> you better believe it, honey. I remember the days when some days she would speak and some days she wouldn't. It all depends on how much dope she had in her. That'll get you when you're a parent. When your own offspring just act like you're not in the world. That's the way the devil has your children treat you. But Jesus don't have anything to do with that kind of business. When he comes, brother, when he comes, he melts their heart and drives all the devils out and they kiss you for the rest of your life. Lord, oh my God. I tell you, Jesus is in the hugging and kissing business. You get full of God and you hug a light pole. You, you, you can love anything that don't move. God can so fulfill you with love, you can just love anything. Lord, it be to Jesus forever. But I was sitting watching TV the other day, and I'm going to give the Lord a chance to minister that way and draw the ones to the altar that he wants to be the altar. This last invitation, unless the Lord deals with me about something else. I was just sitting watching a television program the other day. And Ben Kinchlow, the 700 Club, announced this girl by name, which I didn't know her. And she came out, and she was a real exceptionally beautiful, blonde girl. It looked like she's about maybe... 28, 30 years old. Now, she, she was exceptionally a pretty girl. And boy, she talked like she knew what she was talking about. And she was telling all this thing about being possessed with the spirit of fear and how she drove her relatives up the wall, living in hell and living in torment and making people suffer around her. When she got married, then she got a little bit of relief, but it only lasted for a year or two. She started putting her husband in through hell and all this stuff, you know. She started telling this. She said, I was totally messed up completely. This power since a child had always had me. I was so afraid. I put everybody through hell that was around me. And she said, my sister, she said, I didn't know anything about God. My family didn't either. But my sister lived off in another city somewhere. And I thought it strange one day that she called me and said, she told me that, she says, 
I am praying for you. Wow. Well, she said, I'd never heard my sister say anything like that before in her life. I didn't even know my sister prayed. We wasn't wouldn't really taught to pray. But my sister said over the phone, I am praying for you because my whole family knew I was all messed up. I'd put them all through like a living hell, including my husband. And she said, a few days later, that same sister called me back again and says, I'm going to come to see you, and I'm going to bring you a gift. Well, she says, I live right close to Nashville. Not too far from the airport. And she said, my sister told me when she's going to fly in from where she lives into the Nashville, Tennessee airport. She says, well, I'll, okay, I'll meet you at the airport. Well, I'm coming to see you, but I'm going to bring you a gift, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. She said, well, I figured it was a German shepherd dog or something. Was going to go around with me to protect me from fear. And she said, when I, now I'm sitting there watching the 700 Club, listen to all this, you know. She's telling Ben Kinslow this. When I met my sister at the airport, she says, my gift to you it's a free trip to Cleveland, Tennessee to see Norval Hayes. She said, who's Norval Hayes? <laughs> well, he has a ministry. He lives in Cleveland, Tennessee and has a Bible school, I think, and an auditorium there. And he has a ministry that can set you free. She said, oh, really? She said, yeah, that's my gift. So she got me in the car. We called Cleveland, Tennessee. Made a appointment with one of the secretaries at a certain time for Mr. Hayes to see him. Well, of course, naturally, me watching the 700 Club, I come alive. <laughs> I want to see what this girl's going to say. Because I'd never seen her before in my life. That I remember. I remember ever seeing her before. And uh, she said, my sister, we drove to Cleveland, Tennessee, but we happened to get in Cleveland, Tennessee there at the Bible school, at Mr. Hayes' Bible school, just before service started one night. And they told us that, well, now then, well, you come right before service time, and he's tied up back here in the room, and uh, right now, uh, but why don't you go in service? We asked him about it. And says, he said, just go on in service, and he'd see you in there. So just go on in, sit down. It's going to be starting in a few minutes, and enjoy the service. She said, so we didn't know what to do, so we just went ahead and went in this Bible school auditorium and sat down there. And they came out, and they began to sing. Now, notice they began to sing like they were happy, joyful. They just act like it was full of joy. And they sang for a while. In a few minutes, they introduced Mr. Hayes, and he came up and began to speak. And he began to speak on demons and deliverance, and people being set free by the power of God. And she said, I'd never heard anything like that in my life. I sat there and listened to him, and the longer he talked, I began to pick up in my spirit that what he's saying is what's wrong with me? He's exp he explains he explained the working of demons and evil spirits and things. And he says, she says, I sat there, I didn't know nothing about God or the devil or nothing else. But I sat there, and from what he was saying, I knew that was what was wrong with me. I knew there was something inside me that had me possessed completely. And it had me possessed for years and years ever since I was a little girl. And I'd nearly destroyed my whole family. And she said, after he spoke for a while, I gave an invitation. And I'm just sitting there with my sister and her friend. And when he gave an invitation, all of a sudden, my sister, don't say anything to me, 
She just gets up out of her seat and goes down front. Stands in the altar with some other people that got up out of their seat and went down front. And uh, he had a guest speaker there with him that week in his Bible school teaching. And him and Mr. Hayes began to just lay hands on people and pray. And uh, so the guest speaker was praying with my sister and Mr. Hayes was praying with some other people. And he just said to my sister, the Lord shows me somebody in your family that's demon possessed that needs help. And my sister says, yeah, that's right. Well, he said, just give me your hands and I'll agree with you for your relative, whoever she is, and we'll just pray right now. Now, he don't know that this demon-possessed person is in the congregation, and I don't either. So he just held hands with this woman, her sister in the altar, started praying and asking the Holy Spirit to bless that person and set that person free. And she said, I was just sitting there in that sanctuary. And all of a sudden, I never moved out of my seat. And all of a sudden, something warm began to come in my body. And began to work up and down through my body. And it felt real warm. And she said, all of a sudden, after this warm substance began to come into my body, all of a sudden, in my belly, like down in here, there was one spot down there that turned hot. It, just, it was just as hot as it could be, it seemed like, on the inside of me. And my body was feeling strange and trembling. And all of a sudden, that hot spot in my belly exploded. It blew up, just like a, sticking a pin in a balloon. Just When it blew up, there was some kind of joy power shot through my body, my arms, my legs, my back, Everything about me, my mind, my eyes, just went whoosh and shot through my body. And she said, and all of a sudden, I broke and began to weep with joy. And my body was completely saturated with joy. And she says, I've been that way ever since. By that time, Ben Kitchlow, his eyes look like he's about twice as big as they usually are, and he's about to take a fit. <laughs> he says, yeah, yeah. Well, I never heard nobody explain the Holy Ghost like that. But see, it's amazing how you can describe God when you don't have any sense. <laughs> you don't have any church sense. She'd never been in any war like that before. And she said, when that hot spot on the inside of me exploded and blew up, she said, all the fear and everything that had possessed me for years was shot out of me. And she said, nobody ever laid hands on me. And I just sat there in the sanctuary and sat there in the pew. And she says, I got totally healed, totally healed, totally healed. She said, and I've been like this ever since, every day since that time. And that was several months ago. She said, every day since that time, I've had the same thing. <laughs> totally possessed with joy. It's amazing. I jotted it down a while ago. And that girl came up here a while ago and said, my back is straight. And you could see the Holy Ghost was all over her. You could see that God had done, I mean, he, he'd, he'd done the job for her. And she went back there. I, God shot that in my memory about that 700 Club testimony. And I jotted it down on a piece of paper. Glory to God. 
Well, when I begin to teach you tonight a little bit, and the Spirit of God begin to rise up in me, the Lord showed me, even concerning that testimony. And he said, son, my spirit will also work with people that needs help tonight. There's people in here that's struggling for joy. They're struggling for a clear mind. They're struggling for peace. They're totally struggling. Not only their children are lost, not only their finances, but they're struggling themselves. They haven't found out what life is all about. They're struggling. There's something wrong between them and me, and they don't know what it is. They want to find me in fullness, but they haven't found me yet. But the Holy Ghost can give it to them. He can give it to them. Some of them are lost and don't even know me. But some of them are sad, and some of them are struggling for life. Some of them are struggling for heaven's blessing. And I want to bless them tonight. If you're lost and don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, or maybe you've been disappointed by a lover, a sweetheart, a husband, and your heart seems like that somebody has tucked it and dropped it on a sidewalk and it broke into a thousand pieces and you've tried and you've struggled and you've struggled and you can't seem to put the pieces back together again. That perfect peace and joy and contentment seems to pass by your house all the time. You seem to never get it. And you're struggling, and you're in here, and you know you're struggling. There is no struggling in the Holy Ghost. There is no struggling in Jesus. Learn of me, Jesus said. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. It's easy. My burden is light. It's so easy. I didn't tell you this part. But the Lord showed me when I gave this invitation, he would, the Holy Ghost would work in the congregation just like he did that night for that girl. Now close your eyes right now and be real reverent. Heavenly Father, this service is yours totally. Let the Spirit of God go visit these people that's struggling for life itself struggling for peace, struggling for contentment. They seem to have no way. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. God, there's many lonely hearts here. There's quite a number of struggling people for happiness and contentment. And I don't want to close the altar of God because the altar of God is where you please the Lord. If you're back in the congregation and you're lost or you're struggling for peace and joy and contentment, feel free to get up out of your seat and come and kneel in the altar and say, Oh God, that's me. Oh God, that's me. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Ask Jesus for help. You have not because you ask not. Ask Jesus for help. And he will give it to you. The Holy Spirit will bless you mightily. He already is breaking them all over down here. And blessing them. Jesus, Jesus, that's me. Oh God, help me tonight. Oh God, save me tonight. Oh, God, accept my repentance tonight. Oh, God, accept my broken heart tonight. Oh, Jesus, put all the pieces back together for me tonight. Make all the crooked places straight for me tonight, Jesus. Oh, God, help me tonight, Jesus. Maybe your home is broken up and you've got to have some help. 
You feel like a total failure. You're not a failure. The devil is a failure. You're not a failure. Cast yourself over on the altar of God and tell Jesus that you love him. Cast yourself on the altar of the Lord. Cast yourself over on the feet of Jesus. Everybody in the altar and everybody in the church right now say, Heavenly Father, Father, please forgive me me. of anything wrong I've done. I've come to the altar of God to be free. Accept me, Jesus. I cast my cares over on you. Forgive me of all wrong. Forgive those that's done things against me. I love you, Jesus. I want peace. I want joy. I want contentment. I want strength from God. Jesus, I love you so much. Put the pieces of my heart back together. Let me rest at night. Give me peace. Give me sleep. Oh, give me sleep. Give me contentment. Put your own hands on your own head right now. Put your own hands on your own head. Say, Jesus, please touch my mind. Let your mighty power Go into my mind. Say, Jesus, help me think straight. Help me, Jesus. Think straight. Put my mind back together. All the damage has been done to my mind. Give me a healing tonight. Let my mind be healed. Let the Word of God would keep renewing my mind that I can think more like Jesus thinks. Give me the mind of Christ that I can enjoy God's peace and the contentment of God, the satisfaction of God. Help me to be satisfied and be contented where I'm at. Help me see what Jesus sees that I ought to be. I love you, Jesus. I am not weak. I am strong. My mind is full of peace, full of joy, full of contentment. I love you, Jesus. I receive forgiveness by faith right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for writing my name in heaven. Thank you, Lord. I will work for you. I will love you all the days of my life. Help me, Jesus, to know you better. Make me strong. I am strong from this night forward. I am not weak. I am strong. I love you, Jesus. And I give you all the glory. And I receive the peace of God from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet. Right now, in Jesus' name, I lift up my hands and I worship you. Jesus, there is no other. I worship you, Jesus. There is no other. From this night forward, human beings will not control my life anymore. Jesus, I will worship you from this night forward. And your peace is my peace. I love you, Jesus. Help me to learn of you. You said your burden is light. Oh, Jesus. I love you so much. And I worship you. I worship you. Do it on your own. Worship him. Do it on your own. Do it on your own. Do it on your own. 
Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. But all of you in the congregation, including you in the altar, how many of you have relatives in your own family, fathers, mothers, cousins, and stuff, that's on dope or don't know God and they're struggling and they're sick and all messed up? All right, right now, I want you to say, in Jesus' name, I bind you up, Satan. Against my family, I command you, turn them loose. They have freedom. In Jesus' name, say, Jesus, you are the freedom for my family. Listen to me closely. Now pray in tongues. Right now.